Hi, you're listening to Book Chat with author Vivian E. Moore. Click, listen, enjoy. Keep listening to our weekly episodes to find out more. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Book Chat. I'm your host, author Vivian E. Moore. I hope everyone is having a fantastic weekend. We have a long weekend. It's Labor Day weekend. Um, I don't know what your plans are, if you're going to get out and maybe go to the lake or maybe just take a short trip somewhere, but definitely enjoy this long weekend. Uh, I stepped outside a bit ago, and I smelled uh, barbecue smoke, uh, in the air and it smelled absolutely wonderful. So I I hope that, uh, that you will enjoy this weekend. Enjoy this day. I hope you're having a great day. Uh, you know, my Saturdays are always filled with, uh, (laughs) with a lot of everything and I'm sure everyone else is as well. And that is why I only keep you for 15 minutes because I figured that's long enough to tell you what I need to say and then let you get on with the rest of your day. So without any further ado, here we go with today's show. The title of today's show is you got this and the topic is building confidence. Have you ever considered how confidence is like construction? Okay, so there is no heavy machinery involved, no tools and other supplies, but the idea of starting with a foundation, framework, and walls, eventually a completed project is how the creation of building confidence is made. We all like to think we came equipped with confidence. Well, I hate to burst your bubble, but very few people are born with an arsenal of this superpower. Confidence is often in short supply for those of us who must work our way gradually up to full steam. When it comes to this now, it's not impossible to achieve. However, the consequences is that work is required to reach this goal. I'm an avid believer that as with anything, confidence comes with time and experience, building blocks to work our way from the bottom to the top of self-assuredness. Well, it makes us wonder how people seem so arrogant and full of themselves. Um, Perhaps it is, it's geared to personality or some other genetic trait that makes them seem more confident than others. Kudos to all of the extroverts out there. I'm not one of them. I'll tell you that. And not everyone is fortunate enough to be so self-aware. For those people who need work, there is still hope for you yet, me included. Maybe you aren't quite at the stage to demand mountains to move out of your way, but you can still tell it to kick rocks. Speaking of rocks... I'm reminded of the story of David and Goliath. Anyone who has ever picked up a Bible and can read is familiar with it. If not, I will enlighten you. The passage in 1 Samuel starts like this. And I'm not reading from the Bible. This is just me doing a uh, a synopsis of what happened. All right. So Daniel is a young shepherd lad uh, with several older brothers uh, from this group chosen as king. And one day he will govern Israel. His first trial is a battle with the giant Goliath uh, without use of any weapons except a stone and a slingshot. He takes this bad guy out. You know, this is one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite stories uh, in the Bible. It's so inspirational. It really is. But anyway, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. So let me finish with the story. So anyway, we all know that David was not born a warrior, but chances are he had a few lessons along the way. First from his brothers, being the youngest, I'm sure they taught him a few things about self-esteem. And we all know how older siblings can be detrimental to building confidence. Secondly, his job as a shepherd gave him on the job training for humility, also an education of the necessity of confidence. 
David grew to become Israel's great leader through many trials and tribulations. David proved that he didn't need a group of supporters to back him on his quest. He had one resource available, a powerful one on his side, nonetheless, that helped him win the battle. Now, back to what I was saying about how the, the story of David is one of my favorites, especially this one in particular about him battling Goliath. And the reason why, why I brought this up is because we just studied uh, this particular lesson in uh, for Samuel doing Bible study last week. And so I was so excited about this study um, because it just shows you how um, you know, with a strong belief system. And even when you don't, um, when you lack the confidence to do something, and we know if you're familiar with the story of David, that David had the spirit of the Lord on him. So of course, you know, he, he was like just supernaturally charged is what I like to say. And so, you know, he, he was invincible because he knew that the Lord was on his side, that he was backing him. He knew that that battle wasn't his, that it was God and God was the one that was going to win it for him. And he was just, he was just simply the tool that God used to accomplish this. But the thing about this story is that, um, how, all the people that, 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 that came before David, they were so afraid, you know, of the Philistines, um, and, and Goliath in particular, because he was so huge, you know, when the Bible speaks of him, of being a giant, there is no exaggeration. He was a giant. And so him and, and, and all of his, you know, fellow Philistines, uh, or Philistines, however the pronunciation is, you know, these men were big and they were known, uh, for their war tactics, you know, and this guy Goliath was like the, the, the hero of the Philistines. He was like their, their main warrior. So, you know, he had a lot of talk for David telling, you know, David, all the things he was going to do. And of course, David had a lot of talk for him, but David backed up what he said, you know, Goliath was probably still to this day wondering what happened, you know, but anyway, it just goes to show you that, you know, all it takes is just one person with some confidence to get something done. You know, all of these other people that were standing around in the background, they were afraid, you know, to even think about going into battle and, you know, and that's how we have to look at it. And that's why it's so important to have confidence, to have self-esteem, because without these things, do you realize that you are not prepared to battle no matter what it is, whether you're fighting giants, you know, on one level or another, you need confidence in order to be, in order to do this, in order to win those battles, you know, to step out there on faith, to put one foot in front of the other, to know that, you know, even though failure is out there, but you can't be afraid to go out there and conquer. No matter if failure is on the horizon, you have to believe that you can achieve, that you can win. You know, we may not win every battle, but the point is you have to get out there and try. You have to get out there and fight in order to know what you can do, what you're capable of. So confidence is something that we all need. And I know everybody does not have it. Like I said, it's, it's a construction. It's under, you know, it's under construction, you know, and, and you have to gradually build up, but you got to have that solid foundation. And the way to get that confidence is to have strong people in your corner. You know, and sometimes you may not have that strong support system. And, and, and that's the thing about David, you know, he proved that, um, that he didn't have a group of supporters to back him. He didn't, you know, but he had that one person. We all know that it was God on his side that helped him, but still that's all it takes for us. You know, even if you don't believe in God, if you have somebody in your corner, just that one person, you know, that, that every day speaks something positive to you, you know, or you have people around you that are putting out positive things in the universe. We need that. We need that. You know, negativity has a way of destroying everything. It brings you down. I don't care if you, if you woke up in the best moods ever, all it takes is one person spout negative, whatever to just, you know, to just bring you down, you know, to a level to where it's like, you almost have to start over again to get back 
where you were. But the thing of it is, is that, you know, through these stepping stones of life, we acquire confidence and, and, and we need it to grow without it. We will never accomplish our dreams and nothing makes you lose steam faster than a whack to the ego. Let me tell you, you know, everybody does not have, um, self-esteem high levels of it. And so with that, you know, they may not have a big ego either. And I'm not saying that you need an ego, um, to, to be successful or to obtain confidence. What I mean by having an ego is having a, a, um, a mindset that you can do anything if you try. And that's what I mean about ego, having that strong thought process that you are capable of doing anything, you know, just like you're capable of failing, you're capable of winning. But you have to believe that you can win. You know, you can't go into a battle just like David. David went into that battle with no armor on. Even though it had been placed on him, he took it off. He had a slingshot and a rock. That's what he had. But he went into that battle, battle ready. In his mindset, he was going to win that battle. And that's how you have to think. That you're going to win that battle. You may not win every one. You may not even win the war. But if you win one battle, you can win two. And before you know it, you're winning, you're winning, you're winning. And that's the whole idea of what I'm talking about today. Building confidence. You know, however, if you are assured of your abilities, then nothing and no one can break down the walls. Support it. Support it buy a solid foundation. Remember, you got this. Keep building your confidence and living your dreams out loud. All right, folks, that's all I have for you today. And I hope you got something out of this message. But before I let you go, I want to share with you some URLs so that way you keep up, you can keep up with me and what I'm doing throughout the week until we talk to each other on Saturday. So the first one, of course, is to my speaker account. And that one is https colon forward slash forward slash www.spreaker.com forward slash user forward slash author Vivian e. Moore. Uh, you can also check me out on Facebook like me. Follow me on Facebook, please. Um, it is https colon forward slash forward slash www. I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Https colon forward slash forward slash www.facebook.com forward slash uh, Vivian Moore author. Uh, you can also follow me on uh, Twitter. <laughs> Twitter. Twitter. Uh, my handle is God's Property 46. And also on Instagram, which is https colon forward slash forward slash Instagram.com forward slash God's Property 51. And um, you can also check out my lovely website, which is at https colon forward slash forward slash Vivian Moore dot site dot com forward slash author Vivian Moore. And also please, please, please check out my blog site that is at https colon forward slash forward slash Vivian E Moore dot blog site dot com. You can also, if you didn't check out the live show today, you can pick it up on uh, iHeartRadio and also, also, also uh, iTunes podcast. All right, guys. So, that's all I have for you today. Tomorrow is the first Sunday. I hope you're planning on going to church uh, to worship. Take somebody with you. Take a neighbor. Take a friend. Take some family. Take some kids. And prepare yourself before you go because it is communion Sunday. And tell somebody that you love them because tomorrow is not promised. Today may be the only chance you get to say it. I love you. I hope you love me back. Until the next time you hear my voice, God bless you and goodbye. And have a safe weekend, folks. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed today's show, please head over to iTunes, give us a rating, and leave a review. 